My dear viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 Days of Prayer. I'm glad that you're watching every day. I'm glad that you're following and sharing. Today we are on day that one of the 40 Days of Prayer and we are looking at when the Holy Spirit of Aruz, <coughs> when the Holy Spirit of Aruz. Of course, we are this week dealing with the Holy Spirit series and we have appreciated a number of things, the, 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 you know, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And today we are going to again look at one more aspect of, of the Holy Spirit in our ministry and within the context of plan of redemption. Before we get to the text, let's share a brief moment of prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the precious uh, privilege that we have to be with you at this time and this moment. And Lord, we invite your presence that we may tabernacle together with you, meet us at our very point of needs. Fill me with your spirit as I speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we reflect on the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, um, an experience of the disciples of Jesus after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to pick uh, that uh, experience uh, from a verse number of chapter 2, rather, uh, from verse number 38. Very, very important verse there. That's where we're going to begin. And we did a few verses there, and then we make a few comments as we usher at the um, uh, moment of prayer. Verse number 38 of chapter 2 of Acts of Apostles. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord your God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this unt untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word, verse number 41, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls, verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And verse 43, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. We are talking about <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit overrules. In fact, from the day of Pentecost, the ministry the planning of the mission, the mission activities were not in the hands of men, but were in hands of the Holy Spirit. He was fully in charge of the mission of God. And we appreciate that once, once he came and was poured upon uh, the disciples, they began serving with a difference. Their ministry was different. Their preaching was different. Their singing was different. Their prayers were different. I mean, there's something happens when the Holy Spirit has come. And um, verse number that seven, which I didn't read, if you read verse number that seven, it says this. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do when the Holy Spirit comes upon a soul that saw his pricked? That soul is agitated. That soul is disturbed and awakened. You will never be comfortable when the Holy Spirit has come your way. He agitates you. He pricks you. He makes you uncomfortable that you can be comfortable with the Lord. And the Bible says when the Spirit was poured upon the Pentecostal day, then people heard the disciples speaking because now their speaking was with a difference. Their hearts were pricked. You see, friends, many times in church when ministers and pastors are preaching, this power of the Holy Spirit is still within us. And many hearts are dead and many hearts are pricked. Many hearts feel uncomfortable. Many people feel kind of discomfort because they walked in in the patterns of the world but the Holy Spirit point out to them the areas where they are confused and conflicted and he want them to be aligned with the will of God it, it brings some aspect of discomfort but also some agitation to, to surrender to, to Jesus Christ to come to him to be renewed to be revived this is the power of the Holy Spirit and when he takes charge of a soul their soul becomes different. 
this person becomes a different person. In fact, his speaking changes, his praying changes, his, his, his preaching changes if he's a preacher, his singing changes if he's a, he's, a, he's a singer. And we are praying that this experience that came upon the disciples and the people around the disciples may be our experience. The Bible says they were pricked, they were agitated, and they sought pleading and asked, what shall we do? You know, what shall we do that now the power of the Holy Spirit is with us? What shall we do? And, and, and Peter says, repent that you may be forgiven. You see, it is the Holy Spirit that pushes people to repent. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember the text that we saw from the book of John chapter 16, verse number 7, that when he comes, he shall convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. It is him who convicts you of your sinful ways and shows you how you are walking in contradiction or you're walking against the will of God and he, he prompts you to surrender your evil tendencies. He shows you how wickedness your acts are before the Lord and, and, and invites you to come for, for, for forgiveness because Jesus is gracious. He invites us for forgiveness and that you can surrender your seed. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And when it takes charge of your life or the charge of a church or the mission of God, things are done in extra ordinary way. In fact, those who have surrendered to the influence of, or, or, influence of the Holy Spirit, their lives are never the same. Their friends wonder, what happened to these people? Their lives are different. They're just there with Jesus. They're excited of Jesus. At times they don't make sense to the world. At times they lose friends because they're not, they're not connecting with the worldly friends. This is what the Holy Spirit is able to do when he comes into your life. And when uh, the Holy Spirit takes charge of any congregation, Things are different. The church will be revived. There will be good members in church, faithful stewards in terms of time, in terms of giving, tithe and offering. You know, you know, people struggle. People thinking that they're giving too much for the Lord. It's because the Holy Spirit is not working in them. When he comes in you, you just become a faithful follower of Jesus. You will do anything that Jesus is inviting you to do. And this is what we are seeking for in the experience of four days of prayer. That we may allow the Holy Spirit to come in our lives and overrule, take charge, take dominion. That we may be subject to his power, to his influence, to his rule. That we may be in the kingdom of the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to invite you this moment as we pray that you may allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you in person and agitate your heart and prick your heart that you would be comfortable living this life without serious commitment with the Lord but you shall surrender yourself and you shall ask this one simple question but very critical, what shall I do? The Bible says when Peter spoke upon the, 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 the day of Pentecost, the people who harmed them, having received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they asked, what shall we then do? And Peter told them, repent your sins that you may be forgiven and you may also receive the Holy Spirit. This is my desire this moment of prayer, that you will allow the Holy Spirit to agitate you, to agitate you, to prick you, to move you, to shake you, to convict you, to fit you, you know, to mold you anew and give you desire, appetite for godliness that you will be a true disciple of Jesus. Join me as we pray today that God will move within us through his power, the Holy Spirit, to revive us and to create in us new hearts that we develop what we said yesterday, the divine nature, the character of Jesus. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this precious moment you have given us to share together. What a powerful privilege that we have in the person of the Holy Spirit. That he is able to do things that men cannot do. He causes wonders. The text here says, and people wondered because of the miracles that were happening, not just of things, but of lives changed. You know, when lives were hooked and 
taken captive in the kingdom of Satan are, are saved, are set free. And people would witness what the Holy Spirit was doing in the lives of people. And today we may experience that moment that our lives will be transformed. Those who have been hooked by and chained by the evil one, we are praying through the power of the Holy Spirit for breaking of those chains. Those who are addicted, and Lord, we are breaking those chains in Jesus' name. We are praying that may the power of the Holy Spirit come in and, and Lord, break all the towers of the evil one. Set your people free. Make even those who thought they could never be your servant, be your servants and make them to be agents of change and transformation and lead many, a thousand, a million to the kingdom. Lord, we thank you and we pray. and Continue praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon those who have not received him and those who have received him that they may fully allow him to be in charge that he may overrule in their lives and change and transform and fit them for eternity. Thank you, my Father, and thank you for this precious moment. Continue meeting us at our very point of needs. Bless our seven members we are praying for. Bless the church globally. Even at the general conference, Lord, as they begin the session, we are praying for intervention of the Holy Spirit to give to the church, men and women, contrite spirits and contrite hearts, men after your own heart, men who shall hear you as you speak to them, guide them as they direct the church. We thank you, Lord, even from our families, from homes, our work workplaces, Lord. Our children are struggling with addictions and struggling with habits, Lord. We commit them this moment of prayer, Lord, to you, that you who began a good work in them, you shall bring it to completion by setting them free from any captivity of the evil one and leading them to be your men and your women, people that are preparing for eternity. Lord, bless us right here from the Central Church. Bless all our viewers globally, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for staying tuned. This programs every day. We thank you for being part of our ministry. We love you so much, and we know that you are praying for us. I want to invite you one more time to share this message with your friends, as many people as you can, even your enemies, if you do have them, just share with them. They need this message. But I also want to request you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please just click that button. There, that red button there, just click that anytime we have such programs or even other programs that you'll be notified and be part of this ministry. Till tomorrow, God be with you.